all right so we come to our next question the tightest lower bound on the number of comparisons in the worst case for comparison based sorting is of the order of okay so in this question there are a lot of terms okay so there is tightest lower bound okay and then it's talking about number of comparisons talking about the worst case and it's talking about comparison based sorting okay so sorting can be done in different ways okay the the usual sorts that we study okay they like merge sort insertion sort heap sort quick sort okay bubble sort they are all comparison based sorting because you make comparisons and then decide whether something decide the order of the elements basically because you know you you compare by examining okay whether this is smaller than this thing or this is greater than the other thing that's comparison based and number of comparison is basically finding the complexity and you have to find it the worst case but you have to find the tightest lower bound okay so this tightest gives you uh this sort of idea okay like uh suppose 2n square is in this is in o of n cube okay this is an upper bound but this is not tight okay the tighter bound would be if you write 2 square 2n square is in o of n square so that's what tighter means so this is tight okay and this one is not tight that's different it is correct this thing is correct okay because this is in o of n cube but this is not tight and this is uh, this one is tight okay so this is not tight so that's just the idea of what is tight and what is not tight and you can apply the same thing in omega also because omega is just the opposite of o and so let's see what we how we prove this thing okay the the answer of this thing is known to everybody but let's see how we get there okay so any comparison based sorting can be seen as in the form of abstraction as a decision tree okay you can use a decision tree model to understand any sorting algorithm okay or a decision tree is abstraction of sorting so suppose you have three elements a b and c suppose these are the three elements that you have and you want to sort these elements okay so you have a b c you have to sort them and for that you are going to use a decision tree model okay and how how does a decision tree model work so what do you do you start at the root of your tree so suppose this is the root of my tree maybe I should make it a little higher because it the tree can be really deep in certain cases so I'm going to start at the root and I'm going to write something like this so th this root is a node so in every node what I will do I will make a comparison because we are doing comparison based sorting I'll compare a with B so if I write something like this something out here and this colon something that means I'm comparing a and B so I compare a and B and then I make a decision okay so if a and a is less than or equal to B I go to the left subtree and if a is greater than B then I go to the right subtree so that's the idea and then what I do so suppose a is less than or equal to B so, so for now I know for sure that a will come before B okay a has to come before B and then the only thing because we are just trying to sort okay so in your final sorting a has to come before B and C can come somewhere okay now we need to decide where will where will C come so for that what we will do now we will compare B with C okay now we'll compare B with C and then the same thing if B is smaller than or equal to C we take the left subtree and if B is greater than or equal to C 
we take the right subtree okay so suppose suppose that b is smaller than or equal to c okay that what does this mean that means that then i am no for sure that c will come here okay and then i'm done what i can do is i can write then a b and c like this and i am done so this is my sorting that's done but but now suppose what happens is that b is greater than c okay so if b is greater than c then c can come in two possible places i'm not done now all i know from this one was that a is smaller than or equal to b and now i know is that b is greater than or equal to c so c can go either here or here so i need to decide that and for that i need to compare a and c okay that's what i need to compare to decide where will it go and then i do the same thing like this so this thing so right now we are just trying to understand the decision tree model right how it works and then we'll come to this this comparison based sorting tighter bound thing okay so that was just a small digression uh, sorry about that so now we compare a and c because we have to decide whether c should go here or here so if c is less than or equal to a okay if c is okay uh, please go. okay see if c is less than or equal to a then where would it go then c will go here for sure all right because then i know that c has to go here oh, no uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry in this case uh, because we are comparing a to c so first we have to check whether a is smaller than c or not okay so if a is less than or equal to c then a will be here then c will come here in this position all right because a is less than or equal to c okay so then i can say for sure that this is the correct sorting otherwise if a is greater than c then i have this thing c a and b so that is fine that is one side of tree this is the deepest we can go on this side and so far we have not examined the other side okay so let's examine the other side and what we can do about it so what does this mean this means that a is greater than b so we know that b a is a b will come before a all right and then what we are going to do is we're comparing we're going to compare a with c all right that's what we are going to do and then as usual we will have two things two two uh, two children left and right okay now suppose you know that a is less than or equal to c then you know for sure that your c will come here and then you can stop just here like this okay you can stop out here with b a and c that is the sorting order that's that's your sorted list in this case but but suppose this was not the case okay suppose a was greater than or equal to c suppose the it was something else it was a was greater than or equal to c so in that case your c can go here or here all right c can go here or here so now what you need to do is you need to compare b with c all right and then again you have these two things less than equal to or greater than equal to so if you know that b is less than or equal to c then you know for sure that your c will come in between and then you will have something like this but if your b is greater then you know your c will come here and b will come here and a will come here 
okay so we looked at this tree okay and then these are the leaves of these trees so if you look at the leaves of this tree what do you get you get all the possible permutations of this list you had in the beginning okay and what is sorting sorting is basically a permutation of this list that is given to you and that list should be in increasing order or non decreasing order okay so basically you need you have, you have to look for permutations uh, okay and this one was also your leaf so these are the six leaves of this tree okay there are six leaves and and there are six permutations also why because you have three elements and three elements can be arranged in three factorial ways which is six so that's what you get from your decision tree the leaves of these deci decision tree give you the the permutation and for a particular case depending on what your input is you go from that root to that leaf and that leaf gives you the correct sorting the sorting that you are looking for all right so with that thing in mind just quickly let's quickly run one example in this case that what will you what will we get okay suppose your input was like this okay so we're talking about a b and c and suppose the input that was given to you was one three and you know two suppose this was the input given to you and you have to sort it so you can see that what is a here one is a and three is b and two is your c okay so and then we will see how we get to our sorting using this decision tree model so you compare a with b that is one and three out here okay and if it is one is less than or equal to three if a is less than or equal to b which is true then you go here okay so that is the first step so you go from here to here okay and then you compare b and c which is three and two okay so if you compare b and c and if b is greater than c which is the case out here because three is greater than two then you go along this way like this okay and then you compare a and c and in this case if a is less than or equal to 2 you go this way and this gives you your correct sorting right what is your correct sorting from here a c b a c b is your correct sorting and what is a is 1 c is 2 and b is 3 and you got it sorted so that's the idea behind decision tree model and where are the number of comparisons in this case so this is the first comparison this is the second comparison and this is the third comparison so the number of comparisons out here is actually the length of the path that you traverse from your root to this leaf which gives you the sorting okay the correct permutation that that length is the number of comparisons okay and with this thing in mind we can easily prove that what will be the tightest lower bound for those number of comparisons in the worst case okay so we have seen one thing uh, what was that that there 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 can be n factorial number uh, that there can be n factorial permutations okay so this is nothing but the number of leaves because your leaves as you can see will have all the possible permutations so n factorial is your number of leaves and what you are looking for you are looking for the length of this path so what will happen in the worst case in the worst case you will have to go really deep you will have to take the longest path possible which is nothing but the height of the tree so in the worst case you have to go along the height of the tree that is the worst case so let's say the height is given by h and this n is the number of elements okay out here this is h is the height n is the number of elements and that's why we have n factorial okay out here n was 3 and with that thing in mind what do you know about the height suppose the tree was full okay uh, full and complete which means that all the levels out here were full 
okay so that means that your leaves will be at the last level and all the levels will be full like in this case you see that this is not full in that case what would be the number of leaves in that case the number of leaves will be maximum because your tree is full and complete and you have every level full so your leaves will be out here at the last level will be full with leaves so the max maximum number of leaves that you can have is 2 raised to h okay for height you just do this this is a this is a standard result of what you study in trees and this is the max number of leaves and what do you know in this case the leaves are n factorial so what you can say is that this n factorial has to be less than or equal to 2 raised to h or this h is has to be greater than or equal to log base 2 n factorial okay and and what is this height this height gives you the number of comparisons and in the worst case and since we have h greater than or equal to we also have the lower bound so we have the worst case because we are going through the height and we have the lower bound because this is greater than or equal to and what do you know about this thing what do you know about log 2 n factorial we we have done it in a video we have also done the proof of this this thing in a video that this thing is in theta of n log n okay and that gives you that this has to be the correct answer